You are listening to From Ring to Veil. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And we are your wedding planning gurus. We take the stress out and put the fun back into wedding planning. Wedding Lighting Options for Ceremonies and Reception, episode number 122. So if you are listening to this before May 7th, which is this Sunday coming up, if you're listening to this Friday, Saturday, remember we are going to be at the Rustic Bride Northwest Expo in Snohomish, Washington at Dairyland. And I don't know if they call it Dairyland Barn or if it's just Dairyland. So (laughs) either way, um, if you want all the deets to it, you can go to fromringtovale.com slash RBNW. So today we're talking about wedding lighting. This is something that's interesting that we haven't talked about at all. Right. It might seem like an extravagant expense. It might, yes. And it could be. Mm -hmm. But Marie Cuban is the CEO of My Rent My Wedding, and she has a cost-effective alternative. She's joining us today to talk about wedding lighting for your ceremony and reception. So welcome, Marie. We're so excited to talk to you about lighting, which is a subject that we haven't yet discussed. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. So we love for our guest hosts to, to tell our listeners a little bit about their journey. So are, are you willing to share yours with us? Absolutely. So my journey, it was a little interesting, took some different twists and turns, um, but I started Rent My Wedding while I was planning my own wedding. And at the time I was in law school and um, so it really kind of came about in a unique way. So I was planning my own wedding and finding that I just couldn't find online wedding rentals and being accustomed to online shopping, that was how I was hoping to do a lot of my wedding planning. So I saw this need out there for like-minded people who want to be able to have an easy process that they can go online, order what they need, and have it delivered to their door. So I started out um, just buying some equipment, loaning it out through bulletins and online postings, and it just kind of snowballed from there where there was so much interest that eventually I decided, um, you know, I finished law school, practiced briefly, but um, really found my passion was with the wedding industry and um, doing this service where we can provide rentals all across the U.S. uh, for brides on a budget who are looking to have that dream wedding without breaking the bank. Well, Shannon, I think this is an awesome idea. (laughs) Because millennials now do almost everything online, so... so it's it's a great concept. Yeah, it's so true. It's um, It just really makes it easy, and especially, you know, everyone is busy, and so any step that you can kind of cut down on time or make the process easier is always what we're trying to do. So um, that's really been our goal is to just offer something that's hassle-free and makes it easier for the busy bride. Great. So we're talking about wedding lighting today. What are your unique options for ceremonies? For ceremonies, one really unique thing that we're seeing is um, actually doing pattern lighting down the aisle, and it's something very modern. It's uh, really a cool concept where essentially what you'll do is you'll create a special pattern. It could be just a design. It could be flowers or leaves and branches, and you project it so that essentially instead of your fabric aisle runner, you have this beautiful, um, colorful light that's uh, draping the aisle. That's awesome. Yeah, I really Because, I mean, a lot of places don't really allow you to have, like, petals on the floor now because they stain or whatever when they get stepped on. So that's an awesome option right there. Yeah. What about backdrops for ceremonies? What do you guys do with that kind of thing? Well, there are two different things that I really love. So one would be your traditional backdrop where it's the pipe and dripping and you can create a gorgeous backdrop whether you're outside and you want to create that special area or maybe it's in a ballroom setting and you want to hide the walls a little bit. So backdrops are really great just to give that elegant um, hanging curtains as a nice backdrop for the couple. And another really fun thing to do is actually a canopy. So what we offer is a portable canopy that you just basically pop it open. It's a tripod system, and you can have it set up in five minutes. And it's perfect. Again, you can take it anywhere, outdoors, indoors. And um, it's something that adds that elegance with the drapes. And you can also decorate it. So whether you want uh, to incorporate greenery and branches, you can add that onto the canopy or decorate it with florals or, of course, lighting. And you can take up lighting to transform the drapes into any color. 
Could you do the pattern on that also? Yeah, you definitely could. That would be a really cool look. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the reception. What are some unique options for a reception when it comes to lighting? For lighting the reception, I would say the number one favorite that we see is the monogram lighting. So that's just a great way to personalize your reception. You can put the couple's name and lights, their wedding date, and have that displayed either on the wall or also on the dance floor. So that's a really great way to personalize. And then another staple, I would say, is the uplighting. And those are the lights that you put around the room, and they shine up the walls. And the great thing with uplighting is you can set them to literally just about any shade of any color. So you can really tie in your color palette and get colors that will complement your wedding colors. We had a wedding this weekend with uplighting, and I was just amazed at how it transformed the whole space. Yes, exactly. And that is the great thing about uplighting. You really get such a good bang for your buck because you can take just a few small lights and the lighting really can transform from any space no matter where you are. It just really takes it up to that really amazing effect with the uplighting. So you mentioned monogram lighting or I guess in the industry they're called gobos, correct? That's right, yes. So um, yes. we always kind of have two different names. We use it depending on who we're talking to. So the brides, we call it <laughs> monogram lighting just to keep things easy. And then, of course, in the industry, um, gobos uh, would be the technical name. And um, mm-hmm. and with gobos, to talk a little bit more about that, um, you know, some of the great things you can do to incorporate that in the wedding is actually using the same uh, monogram or the lettering that the brides have on their invitations and carrying that onto the monogram or the gobo for the reception. Um, so we're now mm-hmm. seeing a lot of brides coming to us at the stage of creating their invitations and saying, hey, can you take this invitation and, you know, basically turn it into a light that I can use at the reception. Right. And that can be done. It can. Yeah, it's a really cool process. That is so cool. Because hand lettering is so popular now with the invitation suites and then carrying it throughout the whole wedding. So that's awesome that you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. So spotlights. Spotlights are another lighting option that you have. Uh, And we've seen them before, like on the cake and, you know, on the dance floor. Where else and what else can you spotlight? I would say definitely, uh, you know, the cake is a great place to start. And honestly, I think that's overlooked a lot because a lot of brides don't even think of spotlighting their cake. So definitely, I think that's something everyone should think about because, you know, you spend this time and money getting such a beautiful cake. So I always say, don't forget to show off that gorgeous cake. Um, So the spotlight is really nice because um, when it comes to cakes, you could actually just set the little light on the table and then point it over at the cake and it will instantly illuminate that cake and really highlight it. So that's a great option for the cakes. And then another great um, thing to spotlight is the centerpieces. So once again, same idea where you spend all this time and money creating the gorgeous florals. So you want to make sure, you know, when the lights are dimmed a little bit, you can still see those beautiful flowers. So the spotlights, you can shine one on each centerpiece, and that way the centerpieces are really going to pop. And when you walk into the room, you're really going to see those florals, and they'll be one of the focal points of the room. Ooh, I like that idea. (laughs) And so you send all of this to them. Does it come with instructions on how to set it up? Is it easy to set up for a novice? Yeah, that's the great thing. All of our products, uh, we've either found products that are easy or we actually um, really modify them in-house to make them easy. So every single item we offer literally could be set up by anyone, no experience at all. And um, the great thing with the spotlights, for example, is they're so versatile. They have a magnetic uh, piece on them. So, for example, to do the centerpiece spotlights, um, you know, typically a company would come in and put in trusses and, you know, have a lift system and be attaching these pin spots up high, shining down on centerpieces. Um, but the product that we use, it's a small little light, it's battery operated, and then with that magnetic base, you can actually just stick it right on to the chandeliers or light fixtures and then just point them down at the centerpieces. So you don't need any special equipment, you don't need any experience. That's great. Yeah, that's great. You know, because you could hire a company and have them come out and do all this stuff for you. But if it's so easy, why not just 
rent it, and then send it back. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, our clients are always amazed at just how easy it is. And um, I always encourage people to check out our YouTube channel because there we have all kinds of videos showing how each product works and how to set it up. So it's really amazing to see how much, uh, you know, anyone can really do when it comes to wedding lighting just with a little bit of time and just following a couple of simple steps. So let's talk about wedding lighting trends. What have you seen lately? What have you done Sure. So in terms of wedding lighting trends, I would say, um, well, lighting itself is becoming more and more trendy, especially because the technology is getting better, so the price point is coming down. So, you know, lighting used to be something that would only be seen at, you know, the really high-end weddings with the enormous mm-hmm. budgets. So I think just lighting in general is a trend we're seeing across the board with all weddings of every budget. And um, some of the trends within lighting, um, we've kind of talked about um, some of them here. So, of course, up lighting, um, the monogram lighting, and um, similar to monogram lighting, we're seeing more and more trends of doing the pattern lighting at the reception as well. So that could be covering the entire walls in a certain pattern or um, transforming the dance floor by putting the pattern lighting on that dance floor. So in your bio, it says something about bride sharing. Can you give us some ideas of what that is? Sure. So when I was planning my wedding, it became popular that brides would go on sites like um, The Knot or Wedding Wire or um, different sites where they have classified ad areas. And essentially, brides would purchase items for their own wedding and then um, split the cost with other brides who would then use it for their wedding as well. So you would kind of go in on something together, send it around between the different weddings, and then you know I, the idea would be that you got it for a lower price um, because you're able to share it with some other brides. So kind right. of like classified ads, but just setting it all up <laughs> up front before having to purchase it and hope that you can sell it later. Kind of like a, a group discount type thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And actually, I had another thought. You had asked about um, wedding lighting trends. Um, One that I didn't touch on is actually um, special effects lighting. So we are seeing more and more brides wanting to do something different, something really unique for their wedding. And two ways that they're doing that. Number one would be starry night lighting. So that's a really nice effect where you shine this special light on the ceiling And it has slowly moving stars, clouds, so you literally feel like you're, you know, dancing and dining under the stars, even though you're in a ballroom. Oh, that's That's really cool. Yeah, Yeah. so that's really one fun effect. And another one we're seeing in terms of the special effects is water lighting. So this is another realistic light where it looks like water is moving, so you can shine that on a wall just to give it a really unique accent of the moving water concept. So if somebody had a certain pattern, let's say on their invitation suite, could they send that and have that custom made to display on the wall or even on the aisle? They could, absolutely. So we have an in-house design team, everything from um, creating the graphic design to producing the gobo, it's all done in-house. And our team can literally work with anything. So whether you send us the actual invitation or a picture of something that you've seen, um, our design team can essentially get that in the format we need and recreate it so that it could definitely be used as as the monogram lighting as well. I think that is That is so cool, (laughs) you know, because you work so hard on your invitation suite with your with your uh, designer and they come up with this fabulous thing. And then there there's up until now really no way to really incorporate that in your wedding. Yeah. So I just think that's Mm -hmm. awesome. And you can also, too, um, we've seen brides where they'll set up that monogram light behind their sweetheart table and then ask guests to come up and take pictures throughout the ceremony. So that's a nice little keepsake, too, where all the guests will get a photo and it has that beautiful monogram in the background. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That is a cool keepsake, you know, just to print those out. Here's your favor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you for being here. We, We appreciate it. Anything else you can think of that we didn't touch on when it comes to lighting? 
I think that covered a lot as far as lighting. So I think, you know, the biggest thing I always like to tell people is, um, you know, it really is easier than you think. And some of the ideas that you might see out there and you think that they're, you know, out of your price range or too far beyond your budget, um, I always say look into it, see if you can do it yourself because chances are, um, you know, there's a way out there where you can actually get that look for less. So um, definitely when it comes to wedding lighting, I encourage everyone to look into their options. And I think it's one of the best ways that you can really add a wow effect for a wedding. I agree. Great. So Marie, where can our listeners find you? Well, they can find us online. Our website is rentmywedding.com. And uh, we're also on social media. So anywhere that you're on social media, you can find us uh, with at Rent My Wedding. Great. Thanks for talking to us today, Marie. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. There's a place where you can go and rent not only dresses, but high-end designer dresses. Dresses for any occasion, but specifically for your wedding. From the shower to the reception for the bride, bridesmaids, and guests. It's called Rent the Runway. It's so easy. You just search for what you want, choose a size, plus you can get a backup size for free. Add another style for just a little extra, then choose how quickly you need it. You can even get it overnighted. And the returns are always free. Go to fromringtovail.com slash runway. That's fromringtovail.com slash R-U-N-W-A-Y to sign up. I really like a lot of these ideas that she was giving to us. I, The one thing that really sticks out to me is the design down the aisle. Yeah. For some reason, that is some, <laughs> something I'm like really interested in. Well, to me, it's cleaner. True. You don't step on pedals and get them stuck on your heels, mm -hmm. which I hate. Yeah. Of course, you know, I wear heels all the time. <laughs> quote unquote. Well, if you're the wedding wink, party. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get things stuck and they sometimes if they're colored petals and they have carpet or wood floors, they stain your wood floors because people step on them. And so or plastic runners, too. Yeah. Sometimes you choose to do that and it just doesn't work and there's a bunch of little holes in it yeah. afterwards. So I just like that idea. And and I really like the custom part of that where you can have your your designer, whomever did your your wedding invitations and mm -hmm. your whole suite, design something that that coincides and, and goes with all that. You know, I just think that's so cool. Because <laughs> you know how much I like cohesiveness. <laughs> so I that would be that's cool. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. So it was really fun talking to her. It was. Thank you, Marie. We really enjoyed that. All right, so now we're going to add a little segment or a little addendum, if you will, um, to our episode number 56 on hidden fees. We had um, a local vendor. Her name is Cynthia. She is a harpist, actually. She emailed us after listening to this episode, and she had a little more information for us to add to that. So if you've listened to it already, if you haven't, go back and listen to number 56 and then come back and listen to the rest of what she had to say. Her name is Cynthia Cooney. And you can find her at CynthiaCooney.com. Yeah, we haven't had a harpist no, on. No, we haven't really had musicians Yeah, that's on. right. We've had DJs, but no. no, yeah. no. Musicians are... Not magicians, musicians. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a It was a a hybrid. The, the, <laughs> it was magicians. musicians. <laughs> Sorry, we can't talk today for some reason. That's fine. Oh. They should be used to it by now, right? Yeah. Because some of them, some musicians, musicians, I can't say that word today. <laughs> People who play music <laughs> are magicians. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, so here's some of her tips. Late weddings. Meaning late starting weddings. Right. Like more than 15 minutes. She said it's the only ambiguous cost that she has is the charge of the late wedding fee. Her contract states... That late weddings will incur a fee after a grace period, but the length of the overtime can vary so much. Without possible extra fees hanging over them, many brides will linger in their dressing rooms while poor harpist performs a full hour long recital. Oh, I can just imagine. Instead of what was supposed to be 20 minutes of a prelude. So she charges a late fee and if that, you're late walking down the aisle. Yeah, and for people actually playing music, that actually makes sense. You know, you've, you've been contracted for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And you, for some reason, something's going on and uh, let's say traffic and 
that it just totally makes sense because you've already paid for only a certain amount. And right. maybe she has other things to get to. Mm-hmm. Especially if she's just playing a ceremony. She could right. have another ceremony she has exactly. to go to. That makes, that totally makes sense. Number two, travel. So have you seen a harp? <laughs> I have a friend whose daughter plays and it's huge. Right now. Those things are not easy to tote about. Tote about. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say shove in the back of your car, but I guess you probably wouldn't want to shove it in the back of your car. But anyway, it just makes sense for travel fees. And we will charge a travel fee for floral, too. Yeah. If it's out of our If it's out of our service area Mm -hmm. or our hometown area, we charge, you know, the further we go out, we Mm -hmm. charge different amounts. And if we have to go across the ferry, you get charged a ferry fee. That's right. Which I think most people charge if they're delivering something because it's a fee that they incur. That's right. And, and we shouldn't have to pay out of pocket for it. It's just like you would pay if you have a photographer that you really love here, but you're having a destination wedding. Exactly. You're going to pay their fees to travel. Exactly. That means airport and hotel. Exactly. Number three. Special music. Most wedding harpists have a large repertoire to choose from, but the world of popular music is constantly changing. We often find a bride wants a particular song for her wedding that we must learn. I try to offer one or two special requests free of charge, but similar to the late wedding issue, I found without fee, people will demand a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. (laughs) We're all out there to get something for free. Mm -hmm. We're not going to deny that. Usually at the last minute, no, can you add this? We've Mm -hmm. had that done several times. Yes. And if it's a small something, we'll add it for free. But if it's something large, we're going to have to charge you. Yeah. Can you imagine a, like two days before the wedding, you have to learn a whole new song? Hopefully you won't. <laughs> that's really, you know, my husband plays in a band and he has to learn new songs all the time. Mm. And it, it's not like you can just learn it in one night. Right. It really is a lot of work to learn a new song. And I can just imagine for the harp, that's a lot of strings. I was, th- what this made me think of is... Rain, of course, because we watch Rain, mm-hmm. and they always bring the modern the songs. modern songs into their 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 episodes. Balls. Yeah, <laughs> every time they dance, I'm like, hey, I know that I song. Know. I was like, hey, that's an Ed Sheeran song. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's, there's there's probably harps and all mm-hmm. kinds of stringed instruments in there too. So I can totally see wanting that at your wedding and asking <laughs> if they could learn that. And I bet most harpists probably stick to the yeah. traditional. And it doesn't really, you know, we're talking about a harpist because she's mm-hmm. a harpist. But, I mean, it's all musicians. If True. you're having a string quartet, mm-hmm. these probably apply to them as well. Absolutely. Or a live band. Exactly. Could, I mean, it could even apply to a DJ. So these are not just related to the harpists. Mm-hmm. You could probably blanket them over all your entertainment fees. That's right. I agree. Okay. Shelter. The harp is so lovely at an outdoor event, but sun and moisture can be very damaging to the wood and strings. I bet. Ugh, I wouldn't want to be that. Especially Ooh. here. <laughs> you can stick her under the porch. <laughs> <laughs> can we put you inside and then project you out? <laughs> anyway. Harpists differ enormously on whether they will play outside. When, not March, <laughs> and under what conditions... The hidden cost here is providing shelter and sometimes a firm flooring for those of us who do play outdoors but are not willing to risk harm to our harps. There may be damp, soft, or uneven ground, which can damage the wood. That's true. Going back to the string quartet, Mm -hmm. you have all of those, the bass, the cello, all of those. Mm -hmm. They need somewhere to put their instruments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That totally makes sense. And you may have to get some kind of a... A platform or a shady gazebo or patio or something where they or she or Mm -hmm. whomever you've hired can set up and play. Similar is a cost to special music request. Say you hired somebody to sing with the harpist or with your string quartet. That's going to also mean they have to rehearse together and figure out, you know, because you can't just say, okay, you guys play this and you sing it together it doesn't work like right. that. You got to figure out the logistics. You got to figure out the key. And you got to figure out their cadence. Everything. And, yeah. So that's an extra fee, I imagine. Attendance at the wedding rehearsal is also another fee you have to incur. They need to know how you're walking down the aisle, how long it's going to take you, 
And, you know, they practice the song that you want when mm-hmm. you're going down the aisle. So that's an extra fee as well. Yeah, because then again, they have to bring their harp and all that stuff. The last one that she adds here is the hourly rate. It's the biggest misconception about harpist's fee, and I imagine musician's fee. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions. We will need you for about two hours. What will the cost be? I cannot speak for other harpists, but I have a flat rate for wedding ceremonies. Ceremonies. Right. Not receptions. Right. Well, I mean, well, do I mean, you have a harpist at a reception? No. I mean, but... I guess you might at the beginning, mm. maybe. Anyway, regardless of the length of time, apart from the aforementioned late wedding fee, the provided pretty much the same amount of music for every wedding. So what she's saying is... If you, your ceremony is you, 10 minutes long or an hour long, right? she's still providing the same service. Exactly. And that's her price. Her price is her price. She bills separately for doing things after the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you want her to play during the cocktail hour, she says she separates that out. Right. She has a Which ceremony. Which you should. Yeah. I mean, the ceremony fee and the cocktail hour fee should be separate. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because she may or may not do that. Mm-hmm. Or you may not want her to. My hourly background music fee in 15 minute increments. That's how she bills her. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, you know, here again, there's some hidden fees, not hidden, hidden, but things that you need to be aware of when you're hiring harpists or musicians, Mm -hmm. even bands. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes bands have just a flat rate because they're not usually in the ceremony. I mean, they could be. Right. But but it's the same kind of thing. There's there's hidden fees that you need to know of. So we want to thank Cynthia Cooney for emailing us and giving us some more information for the Hidden Fees episode number 56. Go back and listen to that. If you haven't heard it yet, it's really good. I think very informative. Yeah. If you need to reach us, you can email us at info at fromringtovail.com. You can hashtag from ring to veil. You can message us on Facebook. You can send us a message on Instagram, Pinterest even, if you'd like. We are, we are everywhere except for Snapchat. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't. Have not done We're that too yet. old for Snapchat. <laughs> oh. We do Instagram stories and maybe Facebook stories, but we don't do Snapchat. We Sorry, have millennials. Gotten, we have not gotten into that, no. and I just and we won't get into. I that. can't. I might, but <laughs> I deleted it off my phone anyway. So <laughs> that's why you're not getting my Snap. <laughs> <laughs> there were some funny ones lately. Oh. <laughs> I have to show you. <laughs> It was taking too much of my memory up. Anyway. Subscribe to the show. <laughs> Anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, because that's the new name right now, isn't it? Yes, it's Apple Podcasts now. <laughs> um, you can even listen on the website if you don't if you don't have a smartphone, let's say. Mm-hmm. You want to listen to the show, you can listen on the website. Don't forget about the Rustic Ride Northwest Expo if you're in if you're local to the Seattle area. That's right. It's in Snohomish on May seventh. Seventh at please, one to five. Please come see us. We will have a booth. We have goodies to give away. We want to talk to you. We want to hear about how your wedding planning is going. And if you have any topics or, or, or suggestions for us to uh, explore, yeah, we have some really good shows coming up too. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. We have a a show on Spokane area venues, Wedding venues, yeah, which we are going to expand on that. You know, we'll, we'll probably go to Portland and you know things like that. So we're gonna the peninsula. <laughs> we might have to drive out to the peninsula to look at wedding venues. Yeah, I mean, why not? Any excuse? Yeah, that way we can write off the expense. Anyway, <laughs> we also have a podcast coming out about farm to table weddings, which is a big, huge new trend. Yes. I'm excited to learn more about that. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but mm-hmm. I'm not an expert by any means. <laughs> Neither am I. Then we have an awesome show about elopements. I can't wait to to share that with you guys. Yeah. And then we have some fun ones coming up. I love BuzzFeed mm-hmm. and I get the BuzzFeed wedding feed in my Facebook page. And yeah. so some funny stuff pops up there. We're going to have a show about BuzzFeed weddings. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we are still doing the blog every Monday. You can expect to see a blog yeah. post. Last Monday's was about May wedding flowers. So if you're getting married in May of next year, you want to know what's local and what's or what or what's in season. Not mm-hmm. really local because we're nationwide. That's right. <laughs> 
But if you want to know what's in season, take a look and you'll maybe save a little money for getting That's seasonal right. flowers. That's right. If you'd like to support us monetarily, you can go to our Patreon page, which is from ringtovale.com slash give. And a dollar is very appreciated. So no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtoveil.com. Music provided by bensound.com. We did it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>